Starline. <clears throat> Starline, is that you, Mary? Hey, Kiwi. I think that's probably. I'm going to. We're live on Facebook. Uh, we're just waiting for our esteemed guests to arrive uh, in the Zoom room, Starline. Um, Starline email is is that is that you, Mary? Just shoot a comment on the Zoom if it is. And I'll go ahead and share this out while we're waiting. We're not going to do an intro, so we're just going to bring it right up. How's it going, everybody? All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, okay. <clears throat> She's in the room. Let me just go ahead and share this real quick to uh, the Soulgy pages. And then we'll pull up our guest onto the screen. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. This should be an exciting show. Sunday here in the US, Monday in Down Under. Had a very warm a response, welcoming response to the announcement that Mary was coming on. A lot of people are familiar with her. If these shows resonate with you, please share we are getting suppressed uh like we never have been before but that's okay we're gonna creatively work our way out of it <clears throat> but if you would share it to your page or to one group that'd be great we would appreciate it and thank you for your continued love and support and contributions that help us to keep going every single day we're going to keep doing it uh we're going to keep making it happen all right so let's uh let's bring up our guest let's see All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. There you are. Can you hear me? I can talk very well. How are you doing, Mary? It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Todd, and always a uh, pleasure to talk about some of this information and share it. Absolutely. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard a lot about you. I've seen your name around quite a bit. And uh, let me just put the let me put the zoom link on the Facebook comments in case somebody wants to come into the zoom room. And let me just take care of that real quick. Sometimes they have problems with the reception on Facebook. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I, you know, I've heard a lot about you. Um, this is the Ascension. My short term memory is gone. I don't know where it went. I don't know if it's coming back. <laughs> but, uh, but I know you've been in the game for a long time. I know that because I've talked to a couple of people a few months or maybe even a year back in regard to you. I don't know why it uh, took 1600 episodes to for us to find you and get you on here because you have an important message and a, an important story and important energy to share with people. Uh, we have a, an age old question on this show. I don't ask it all the time anymore, but uh, for someone like you, I'm quite intrigued. When did you wake up? Did you have a, uh, <laughs> did you have a series of traumatic events that woke you up like a lot of us <laughs> or did you, did you just flow right into it? I think for me, um, it's been a process over a lot of years. I think even as a child, I was nosy and curious. And I always was fascinated by the weird and the wonderful um, because I wanted to understand why are we here? What's it all about? Those questions, even as a youngster, were important to me. You know, I'd read any book that was um, unusual about unusual events, paranormal, mysteries. So, I, you know, I reckon I was born with a book in my hand wanting to know, you know? So in a way, I've been on this journey right from the moment I think that I could hold a book and read. But in terms of waking up, I think that literally has been 
through the process of um, growing up, um, being a nurse and a midwife, looking at health, looking at prevention, looking at what's it all about when you go into counseling. And I've been a counselor for the last oh, 35 odd years, hearing accounts of people's um, experiences and not all of them were you know, in psychology. That was my big issue is that psychology didn't explain the paranormal. It didn't explain people you know, losing mum or dad and then feeling them around or sensing them around or whatever. And so all the time it was expanding me as I was um, interacting with people and their experiences. And of course that's taking me to a whole new understanding of what is reality or what we think is reality. So in a sense, this is the journey that keeps going. So when did I wake up? I think it's been a process of gradually waking up through my life um, and realizing there is so much we don't know or we're, we're, we're told, uh, uh, if you like, a limited and limited paradigm that has stopped many people honoring really who they are. Yeah, 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 that's what it's all about. Our uh, hashtag here, our main hashtag is I am soul. And the second one is the human is the hero. Uh, because we do spend a lot of time talking on this show about the multidimensional aspects, our dimensional and interdimensional experiences, visitations, and the type of things that you've been digging into since you were a little kid. <laughs> but we realize it seems like through this community collectively that that without the human aspect conscious and consistently applying what we're pulling in that there really is not going to be any alignment uh it's almost like what we've been running from the whole time is is uh is the gift and the prize and i think people are starting to to uh get comfortable with the power that is coming in uh and the limitless capacities that it offers for us uh, now, in your case, I'm just really curious because of now I didn't know that you were a counselor too. Um, are, are you an energy practitioner now? Do you work with people now? I do, but I don't work with energy work particularly now, more with consciousness in the sense that I do hypnosis. And so I okay. work with people in an altered state where they want to explore more of either this reality or a past life reality where they may very well go into um, different timelines, um, yeah. parallel universes. Um, I have no limits to where I will go with someone because what we've all discovered is that once you um, understand that we are unlimited, all of this opens up to you. But the big issue, as you know, Todd, when you're waking up is um, the, the fear of um, not knowing if it's real. Um, the the yeah. concern is, am I crazy or is this real? Yes. Um, this is the big uh, one because we. I'm have glad to hear you say. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear a veteran like you saying that. We talk about it and laugh about it all the time on this show, but uh, but it's true. And even for someone like you, I mean, I'm sure that you've had your share of divine episodes or whatever you want to refer to it as. You know, the universe speaks to all of us in a unique way uh whether it's through our ears or through our eyes or all of the above are there any particular essences or star family uh consciousness groups or anything that you seem to be um uh, most uh kindred with that assist you that type of thing um well i call them my non-human team and i got introduced to them when i explored my own awareness and that is very much part of my work now is finding out where people are opening up, how they're opening up to their non-physical reality. You know, what senses are they experiencing? Are they seeing things physically or through their inner eye, for example? What do they sense and feel? Do they feel energies around them? Do they see orbs? Do they see spirits yeah. and whatever? And for me, uh, at one point, I thought this was something that only people with, that were gifted could do, you know, the mediums, the clairvoyance, the clair all this I thought was just for gifted people until I had a bit, I suppose it was a bit of a wake up call because I joined a, a small closed group of individuals 
that started to explore their own awareness. And through that, I did everything from remote healing, from psychometry to overshadowing to connecting to the team, as I call it. And, and from that experience where I was testing myself all the time, Mary, are you leading yourself down the garden path here? Or Mary, <laughs> is this actually a reality? I tested the source yeah. of the information that was coming in and saying, if you want me to believe in you, you better prove to me that you're real. And then it was whatever information I got, I would test it out in some other way to the point where, you know, it, it became very obvious that whatever I was connecting to was had integrity, was authentic. Yeah. And from that, then um, it's been really useful because, as you know, we're, you know, unless you open up multidimensionally, you're wandering around the planet with one eye closed because you will mm. never make sense of your life unless you do open up to the other side, because that's what gives you all the answers to why you're here. What's it all about? What is it, what matters? You're not going to get that from a PhD in whatever it is mm. that you do a PhD in, because that's not going to answer these kinds of questions. So a lot of my work, Todd, is about assisting people to work with their multidimensional cells so they can get the answers that they've been seeking perhaps all of their life um, and being having trust in it having confidence in it is part of what I do. I show them ways to have, you know, the tools to m make a map that makes it real and tangible for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's really uh, intriguing to me. Uh, you know, a lot of people, including myself, had experiences with particular, uh, you know, uh, groups of consciousness or particular divine essences spirit guides and as time went on they had embodiment experiences and, and no longer were speaking to that as an external but on the other hand myself and many others have had um, direct uh, you know direct uh, engagement with apparitions mm -hmm. uh, you know Morgan and I have had a star family come into our bedroom uh, translucent but yeah. but you know somewhere between non-physical and physical they, you could see through them but uh and so i and and then you know and i wonder uh are, are these one and the same is you mentioned you talk to your clients or, or you want to find out are they having this through the third eye are they seeing things with their own eyes is it one and the same are these two different things i'm i don't know the answer i'm just curious what your perspective is what I'm interested in when someone comes to me is how do they experience that aspect of their reality? Because then I know where maybe they could be helped. In other words, mm. if they're still unsure, I can show them different ways to manage that, to make it more tangible so they have confidence in it. In the end, it's all one and the same in the sense it's that yeah. multidimensional consciousness that we are yeah. that actually finds different ways of giving us information whether it's a sensing, feeling, knowing, or, you know, it's, it's more visual because a lot will see more of the visual spectrum, for example. They will see orbs of light. They will see energies. They will see spirit beings and whatever, but some of us don't. For me, and truthfully, my information comes in a, a kind of screen <laughs> to one side of me. I get shown things on my screen. I caught my, it's not here, it's over here. It's always been over here. And What's interesting is I will be given information. I'll be shown things um, through that medium. So we all have, I think, a yeah. different way of interpreting that information. But a lot of people, as you know, Todd, dismiss it. They're afraid that they're yes. getting carried away, that it's fantasy and imagination and all those things. So they want to know, how do I know it's real? And we yeah. work with ways to actually give them confidence in knowing that that has a reality and actually can work with them for them to help them understand more of what they want to to get their answers to understand what their mystery is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like with your with your history too, with your practice practices, um, that you you would be privy to as you work with these clients in hypnosis, you might be privy to uh, a la Dol Dolores Cannon, and a few others, you know, where they actually pick up intel from the clients through their transmissions. Does that 
Is that does that ring a bell with you? I, I got to know Dolores very well. She was a colleague and a friend, and we often spoke at similar conferences. Dolores did a wonderful job with um, collating the data that she was getting as a recorder, as she called it, of that information. Certainly, I am getting very similar information when my clients go into that space. But what I am doing is slightly different because mm -hmm. I am not just a recorder. Part of me is working on that other level with my client in that, that frequency. So I'm getting information as well as my client, which enables me to help them maximize their session because I, I'm getting, if you like, clues through my own yes. uh, tuning in, as I call it. So when they're seeing things, I may be seeing some of that too. I may mm. be shown some of that so that that helps me keep them on the yellow brick road, if you like, to where they need to go. Yes. So before I do a session, I'm saying, I'm not only talking to you, I'm to talking to your super conscious. I want your, your yeah. super conscious to be part of this session and whatever you most need to know that you're not even conscious of, we're asking for that information to be made available. So we're working in that yeah. quantum field. So it's, and I'm participating in that quantum field. I am not just a recorder. That is, where we differ in in how we operate yeah. both yeah. ways are extremely val valuable it just depends on yes. how the person wants to work with you yeah yeah to me that sound you sound like an uh, what i would call an energy practitioner because you're you're in that field working with it um uh, you know clearly working with it have you have you noticed uh over the years especially you know particularly this year i know things have accelerated a lot the last two or three years but have you noticed a change uh, in your clientele collectively? And what I mean by that is, are you seeing evidence in your practice of the expanded collective awareness, you know, hitting on the micro with, with, the, with the clients that walk in the door? Absolutely. And interestingly, a lot of them had that kind of shift, if you like, around the time we, you know, we talked about 2012, um, 2013, around that period, said everything changed for them and they would go often from a completely different focus from a materialistic um, yeah. kind of uh, belief system and living to completely changing lifestyle, diet, um, opening up completely to their multidimensional selves, wanting to do healing, wanting to help the planet, feeling the consciousness of the planet. And that has been dramatic in some cases. Sometimes it will happen through sighting a UFO and that being the mm. catalyst, or it may be through a near-death experience, shamanic experience, out-of-body experience, learning remote viewing, um, learning meditation, learning healing. All of those that raise the frequency have also activated a, an expansion of consciousness. And I believe they're all different ways that we are now opening up to understanding more of who and what we are. Yes. Yes. Oh, I like this. And, and I'm just curious too, what your take is, you know, in, in doing this show, um, about 400 episodes into this show, Morgan told me, you know, you need to start pulling up the higher self. I think you would, you're saying the super consciousness of the other person. And so I developed a practice of doing that. And I've had, you know, and again, I can't really prove it to anybody, <laughs> but I've had experiences on the show, even though we're not in the same physical proximity. Uh, but as you were describing your work and how you enter that field, or you engage that field, or at least observe that field, um, and I wanted to ask you, because now we're starting to see things, in, and I can use a couple of examples. You get a small group of people together, two, three, four, five people, um, and they they have an experience, which I would call uh, non-physical. I'm not running anyone who all saw an apparition come in at the same time, but I have talked to people, couples, who have had these things happen. Morgan and I have had, had them happen. And where my question is, when you have two people or more together like that, and that field produces something that has some solidity, you know, at least visually, uh, and, and things like that, uh, is that the two of the the two consciousnesses uh, creating that 
is there is there an external element involved i mean do you, do you have any any guidance on this or any information on this cuz uh, it's intriguing to me how that all works well the way i understand it, and it may not be the way others do is that i feel and sense if you like a team um what i call my not physical team it's, you know what i call a life guide spirit guide the gatekeeper a team of guides that come in and out that are non-physical. Some of them will be um, extraterrestrial. Some will be interdimensional. Some will be transdimensional. Some will be perhaps even visitors from our future. All of those different mm. intelligences. And I believe that when you um, allow yourself to sense and feel what's going on, particularly in a group, they've also brought their team in. So mm. you've got a non-physical um, consciousness of, uh, of maybe many different species, um, mm. or you know, it can be a, a, a high variety of different forms of consciousness and whatever. And they're interacting with you in this field of consciousness. So if yes. it's um, uh, appropriate, then various phenomena will come in. And I taught what I'd learned over a couple of years and we had some really fascinating phenomena occur because they were wanting to show us more of the tangibility of that reality. The thing is, we're very so severely programmed out of our multidimensional cells that it takes, even with all the evidence that we have, it takes a long time for you to say, OK, I've got it now. I actually believe it yeah. now. Um, that's yeah. the big one for most people yeah. is moving into, I actually get it now. And yeah, it's real, but that's a process yeah. for many of us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I can totally relate to that, you know, cause uh, all these things happen, you know, and I know I'm, I'm just like everyone else. And then of course the doubt, you know, and the craziness uh, frequency comes in your head and all that. And, and I have to remind myself occasionally, I, I think back, look, all the things that happen, you can't deny that. And, and, it, and you still have to check, or I do, I still have to check myself sometimes because I, you know, I run into so many fascinating people on this show like yourself. And there's, there's that, uh, that program that still plays of uh, inferiority, superiority. Uh, oh, she can do that. I can't do that. But, you know, like you said earlier, it's different for everybody. Uh, and I would imagine you've seen that firsthand over the years. Well, what's been wonderful about my work, um, um, more than anything, because I say I, I meet some of the most aware people on the planet. What beautiful gift is that for a start? But when many of them will come to see me, they may be very talented in the me uh, metaphysical field. Many of them are healers. They're working intuitive, they may be channeling and all the rest of it, but it's still really interesting how many of them still doubt themselves, still mm. doubt yeah. their abilities. And often when they come to me, they're looking for tools to make sure and um, clarify their connection. So my work has often been, you're already riding the bike. I can show yeah. you how to work the gears. I can show you how mm. to work the break and do a few tricks so that you have then something more solid to work with because that seems to be the most important for many that come to me is yeah I can do this but what actually is happening how can I understand it and because I'm nosy when I opened up to this part of the reality and I I tested myself in more ways than a little because there was a really healthy left brain skeptical side of me that was the nurse mm -hmm. midwife saying come on guys you're gonna have to prove this one to me um it's been a wonderful process because what it's done is got me to develop tools to have that solidity that i've needed to trust that information and when it comes and it's accurate you know um then you say you know what i know i didn't know that and here it is right and there, there right. it's yeah, the gentleman I we had on earlier today, he started writing after he woke up. He said he'd never been a writer. I said, where does it come from? <laughs> you know, where does that information come from? And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it's a, and you know, the other thing that I see happening, uh, 
is there's no doubt that there's more accessibility to a greater consciousness. Like we can tap into to more and more and more. And you see things happening all over the world. It's not in the mainstream. It's not even in the alt news. But uh, we have the ability to seek and find. I mean, uh, if we I guess if we pursue it diligently, uh, any information that we want. Are you seeing people starting to push this envelope and break through and pull down uh, the genius and pull down the mastery? Absolutely. What happens after the catalyst of awakening or activation, whatever name you want to give it, is that people are downloading valid information, useful information that they have no conscious memory of learning. In other words, you'll get a 16 year old, as I've talked to, who calls herself a hybrid and she downloads quantum physics. You get children describing information that they get from these intelligences that they're connected to, for example. And it's information right across the board from the origin of the species to what the moon is and, and what's there to all sorts of information. They don't watch talk shows, they don't read books on this, but are giving information that is way beyond um, their ed our educational system. If that has integrity, and certainly a lot of this information coming, technical information, free energy, et cetera, et cetera, is being downloaded. The big thing is, well, who's, who's giving it to them? How are they getting yeah. that information? And sometimes it's on board craft. Sometimes they're being taught on board craft, this information. As an eight-year-old was explaining to me that when he's on board craft, um, he's with a group of children. Some of them are um, school friends. Some of them are, are different children. They don't look the same. And he said, and I said, how do you, you know, how do you know they're not human? He said, well, their eyes are different. He said, but we're taught how to use our consciousness. We're taught how to create things and we get taught complex information. And I said to him, so can you tell me about this complex information? He said, no, because it's too complex for you. So I was, given, <laughs> I was told quite clearly that I wasn't up to scratch when it came to that, but the he bottom line eat. he is, wouldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, you know, it, um, the bottom line with all of that, Todd, was that this is information about different species. It's about what happens, um, what they're taught, the, you know, a whole range of things to do with spirituality and what have you. And if you ask them consciously to, to give you that, they would they will say, I don't know anything about that but they will be given yeah. this information and it will be on a whole range of subjects. Then you say, right, well, do I trust this? Where's it coming from? And that's the next step is you questioning. Okay, so who are you? Um, mm -hmm. And also, has it got integrity? Has that, mm. inform that information useful to you and whatever? And that yes. is about people say, well, what, you know, knowing what the source is, the source to me is if it's, it's, spiritual information that has integrity that resonates then i am willing to trust the the, the um, consciousness that is allowing me to have that or giving me that information that's how it works and because you know uh, as well it's all about intent the if yes. your intent is for the highest spiritual truths that's what you're connecting to into the matrix that's what you're connecting to is that intent that thought form yeah, that's where, that's where I was going to go with it next, uh, you know, kind of going back on what you were talking about earlier. Um, so if you say it's me and you and Morgan, we get in a room and say, let's let's put our uh, consciousness together and our intentions together. And I guess my question is, are they sh they the you, me, we and it, the teams, are they showing up uh, because of our intent? Are they showing up in present anyway? Uh, because there seems to be a, for lack of a better word, there seems to be kind of a push as I'm looking at the landscape of everything within this chair that I sit in. There seems to be some type of, I don't, I don't want to use this word either, but agenda, like, 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 let's get to work. Uh, you're awake now. Let's, let's get this thing going. Does any of that jive with you? Well, there's two things that come up. One is I am, I feel like the team guides me to where I need to be, what needs to happen. Mm. I've given up trying to work it out. Mm. I've given up trying to say, do I go in that direction or that? It's just like, <laughs> you're going 
there. Right, okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> this is where I'm going yeah. now. So I do feel there's another level of orchestration going on that I'm not conscious of, at least, yeah. is, is, is going on. Yeah. But I believe anyway, the soul itself is orchestrating that. That before right. I came in, when you work with people with past lives where they come through one lifetime in between lives as a spirit, then choose the next incarnation, they describe to me that they choose their challenges, they choose their parents, they choose mm -hmm. their siblings, they choose who's going to teach them things um, and what have you. So the whole, um, if you like, program, I believe the soul has orchestrated as it mm. incarnates so that everything it wants to achieve, both in a personal spiritual way or for humanity, are part of that mandate. So in a, in a way, the super conscious is the manager and brings yeah. in what needs to happen for us to to achieve what we've come here to achieve yeah yeah and i can relate to that <clears throat> you know not through my own experience and, and observing others <clears throat> that sometimes that assistance comes in events or situations or occurrences or roadblocks or detours yeah. you know and so that's that seems to be picking up steam too uh, in, in regard to, to uh, following the guidance, I know you've been doing this compared to, the, to most of us uh, much longer, this relationship you've been uh, cultivating for much longer, uh, but you talked about the guidance and, and, and you talked about stop trying to figure it out. Have, have you gotten to a point or can you give us any, any tidbits of wisdom on how to accept and allow that guidance to come in freely and to not resist it because i think a lot of us are going through that we we take two steps up and then one back <clears throat> because of the same thing that you talked about earlier with the doubt creeping in and maybe you're crazy well i've got a very logical side and one of the things that prevents us from honoring our intuition our feelings our knowings our senses is because we just wonder whether we are it's our imagination. It's created. We're creating it and what have you. And so I play devil's advocate a little bit around that, saying, what, you know, if they've even gone to um, a past life where it's been really highly strange, I then say to them afterwards when they say, well, I don't know if I can believe that or whatever. I'm saying, if I said to you consciously, create something you wanted to explore, would you create that? And they'd say, not in a million years. I said, so isn't that telling you something? That's not like imagination. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the difference between a reality, a tangible reality and fantasy is this. And I talk about this a lot when people want to know how they're gonna access the information in hypnosis. I said, if it's a reality, like I say to you, tell me what your bedroom looks like, immediately in your mind's eye, there's your bedroom, you know where the bed is, you know where the window is, you know where the door is, because it's a reality. If I said create a bedroom, you'd have to think, well, how big would it be? Would there be two windows? What color would the, you know, the paint be? It's a, actually a completely different process. So mm -hmm. if you are getting something spontaneously in front of you without thought, often it's right. completely without thought, then you can be pretty certain it is information that you have tapped into the matrix or your guides or, or whatever it is you're connected to because it will just come in. You know, those spontaneous um, information is yeah. as long as you, you, know, you don't color it with left brain and pull it apart, which is what we do. Yeah. We get this information and then we start to edit it because our left brain says, oh, hold on a minute. Maybe I saw that on the TV sometime or maybe I read that. No. If it's coming in spontaneously without thought, it's the complete opposite. We're, with our left brain, we think before we speak. Right brain, we speak before we think so that we are mm. not coloring any of the yeah. information that comes in. If it's coming in like that, you can be pretty certain that it's accurate. Just yeah. don't mess it about by editing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's because we're so smart. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I think we're all starting to pick up on that. You know, when it comes in, put yeah. it out and just it's it's a universal. It's a it's a it's part of the, the it's what's part of infant intelligence, uh, the beehive intelligence. Now, uh, there, there's, um, of course, a lot of talk about 
you know, for instance, this year, there's been a lot of dragon talk. We've had a lot of dragon uh, episodes, uh, you know, different essences and such, and even through the years. But when it, when we look at that collective team, these energies that are obviously connected to us, aspects of us in some form or fashion, the galactics seem to, to, to be in the first seat. The star families seem to be the, the majority or at least the biggest group. Uh, and they, they tend to be, when you talk to people, when you read things, providing a lot of direction, uh, almost as if they're the closest thing to us. I don't know what your thoughts are on the star families and the galactics roles, uh, but if you could shed a little light on that, I'd sure appreciate it. <laughs> well, they are closest to us because they're the family. Um, the bottom line is we many of us have incarnated from those in different intelligences, either um, in this dimension or interdimensionally. We have in our DNA, and it's becoming more and more obvious, um, anomalies that do not belong to the indigenous aspect of ourselves, the indigenous hominids. And the information that's coming is at least 12 different species of star beings are, are part of our DNA. What it appears to be happening as our frequency rises, it's activating more of the star um, DNA, our star family DNA. So we're then saying, oh, I think I'm Pleiadian or part Pleiadian or I'm part Arcturian, whatever, because we're activating that part of our DNA. But we also have the DNA of other species as well. And as, the, as our frequency rises, I believe we're gonna be activating all of that. So the qualities of each of those um, different um, intelligences will be made available to us at, at some point. And this is what they're talking about, activation of DNA. This is what mm. I believe is going on. So, you know, as our frequency rises and we, we activate, as I say, whatever part of us, whether it's a dragon part of us or whether or not it's an Arcturian or, or whatever it is, then we start to say, well, that's, that's family. But a lot of the new kids coming in already know um, mm -hmm. who's their family. And you know, I had an eight year old explain to me that his ancestors and his family is the mantid beings and that when he dies, he's going back to being a mantid because they're his ancestors. So they're being born awake. They're already being yeah. born activated. So that's the difference. We're uh, the, the, you know, the older models. We're taking a little longer to <laughs> get the program. <laughs> we're like the big we're like the big metal cars from the 60s and the 70s. Right. Um, yeah, we've had some kids, uh, not too many, but we've had, I don't know, probably 10, 10 mm. children from the age of maybe seven to like 13. And it's been really interesting. Um, I remember when I was getting downloaded seven, eight years ago, and of course, my download was solo, you know, a lot of it was Sology, you know, here's what you need to do and, uh, and all that. But I remember them, I remember it coming in and saying to me, you're going to have to do this and really put your nose to the grindstone till you're about 57 or 58. And I'm, I'm 57. I'll be 58 in December. And, and, and when I got that information, I could just see the swell of, of young people who were already, you know, you know, already aware, like you said, and it, it would only make sense that if you get enough of them on the planet, <laughs> our work is done basically, you know, and that's what's so wonderful. There are many different ways we're being activated at the moment from the solar frequencies, cross circles, going to ancient sites, for example, all of them have frequencies. You are being exposed to many that are, are, are activated coming out with the star languages, for example, artwork that activates music that activates mm -hmm. all of these different ways. And of course, those that are already activated are activating others as they go around the planet because it's all held in your energy field. And that's how I was, it, it was explained to me because I was sort of talking to the team and saying, I get all this information. I get people sending me scripts, symbols, um, star languages, what have you. I can only show a minuscule amount of that information in a presentation. So what can I do with it? How can I put that out there? And the response was, the mere fact that you viewed it, Mary, is taking it onto mm -hmm. your energetic hard drive. Mm -hmm. So it's all there, yeah. even although you're only showing a minuscule amount, wherever yeah. you go, that is then disseminated to those that um, yeah. are in 
vicinity. And I said, oh, come on, guys, that sounds a bit incredible to me. You know, you're going to have to prove this to me. You okay. are a devil's advocate. <laughs> I, so I, I need to know that it's authentic. So I said, you prove it to me. Literally within a week, I was at an expo and we were on a panel and I wasn't really saying a great deal, but one woman in the audience stood up and said, Mary, I've got to tell you this. She said, you're not saying anything very much at the moment, but you are beaming out all these frequencies. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. okay, got it now. I, I'll take yeah. it, I'll take it on board, but I'm not the only one, anyone no. that's opening yeah. up is going around yeah. and it's as you know, it's almost like a virus is going around and it's touching those ready to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the quantum quotient and that's starting to come into effect too. You know, I've, I can relate to what you're saying and I've, I've experienced it a lot uh, in the, in the shows we've done, not just this type of show. Uh, but I remember uh, early on the direction was, can, you know, what do I do? You know, just continue adding frequencies to an ever expanding vibration. You're just a mirror of the universe. And I thought, oh, okay. So, you know, collaboration, co-creation, that type of thing. But I've seen this happen so many times. You know, we've got a saying on the show, it's spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative, and courageous, depending on what we're talking about or doing. But it, there's something about that spontaneous, just like you were talking about earlier, when that information comes in and you go right brain with it, then it's, it's flow. It's perfection. It's like it's one take, you know, and I've seen it happen so many times in musical stuff that we've done. And then even shows we'd have a show and let's say, you know, Todd forgot to put the announcement up and we yeah. just go ahead and go on five minutes. And, and, and all of a sudden there's 150 people on and, yeah. and everything just aligns. It's like, so I, I feel that we're kind of pulling this in all of us, but at the same time, I can feel that collective team is sitting there waiting for us just going you know like cheering us on but like we're here we're here to help you a lot like what people talk about in the religious circles when they they say the angels are there but you got to ask them for the help you know yeah. so so we've we've obviously got some great support there uh, no doubt about it so and and now you so you've got uh, now do you do I, I think i saw where you were at a conference not too long ago i want to say it was in australia I may have you confused with somebody else, but you you do uh, conferences, seminars, workshops, that type of thing? Yeah, I mean, primarily I go to a lot of conferences. I mean, I'm coming to Conscious mm -hmm. Living Expo next year in, in LA, and I'm also doing Contact in the Desert, but I do workshops within that. Mm -hmm. And one of them is mm -hmm. I've called Activation because I've put together all the different ways that one can be activated, you know, um, a bit of the art, a bit of the frequencies from the languages and whatever, um, music, all those different ways, because I usually make a joke around this, Todd, and I say, I'm taking, you know, at the beginning of the presentation, I'm taking no responsibility for how this may change your reality. So if you don't want your reality change, you better leave now. Um, because I've found there's been some amazing shifts with people that will hear maybe just a language and then start finding themselves writing a mm. script or, or whatever. So I know they're all, they're all activating things. But my workshops, um, there's two primary ones that I do. One is for experiences that don't have a voice, those that have held on to their story for many, many years and never been able to share it to actually talk to others that have had experiences in a safe place. That one is extremely valuable because it gets people to connect and to share and not feel alone. But the second one I do is for hypnotherapists and it's mm. to actually help them work on this other level. So in other mm. words, you can do it this way as a recorder mm. or you can join on that mm. frequency. Let me show you how you Very do it. Yeah, on that first one, I on that first one, I totally get that. That's how this show's set up, and really the whole Sology community, even going back to the days before we started broadcasting, it was it was basically people sharing their stories, their skills and abilities, in a yeah. place that they would be supported, not ridiculed, you know, and and very open. Uh, now, now I wanted to ask you too, because you've been again, you've been doing this for quite a while, and you've done a lot of research, and of course had a lot of uh, clients over the years. Uh, let's talk about disclosure for a second. And what I mean by that is uh, the potential program of disclosure, uh, the, mm, 
um, I don't I don't know what word to put in here because I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, I respect everybody's reality. But what I'm getting at is this. It seems like the this now you tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it seems like that the 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 juice behind disclosure is kind of running out. Uh, it seems like that the emphasis is becoming more and more about self empowerment and about self create, you know, creation within one's own life and, and that type of thing. Uh, and I don't see as many people sitting on pins and needles waiting for the spaceships to land, or whatever big events going to happen. Uh, do you think it's an important thing to keep our eye on what's happening collectively, what's being leaked out and that type of thing? Or should we just pay attention to our own stuff? I think it's there because we've chosen a reality where we will have the 3D um, side of disclosure, which is, you know, a, a, a drip feed of actually now you, there are these strange unidentified aerial phenomena. We still don't know where they come from and what have you, which we know is a lot of BS. But at the same time, mm. it's allowing the media and mainstream to start getting a handle on the fact that maybe we're not alone. Um, and for we do know that the, the problem has been this truth embargo so that many people have questioned their own experiences because I must be crazy because nobody else is having this experience and there's, there's nothing about us being visited or whatever. So it has to happen, certainly, and I hope it, it speeds up because we're still getting people medicated and still being put in hospital because mainstream mm. it still is struggling to believe this is a reality, but it is shifting their response to my work for example has changed there's no longer the the you know the, the, that that silly little um smirk or whatever that they used to be so it's it's all i think in a divine way perfect the other thing though that is really changing is the people coming out of the space closet as i call it they are owning their experiences now from all walks of life. We've got professionals with PhDs, we've got nurses, doctors, social workers, we've got farmers and housewives and children, people writing story, their story now, which a few years ago they wouldn't do. Many feel like they're being um, pushed to share their story. The more that we have this kind of information out there for people to read, to hear stories and whatever, is giving other people permission to own their story too. And that's the groundswell, the disclosure from the ground up, as I call it, yeah. is what's going on. Yeah. And that's exponential. And that's what I- Yeah, I agree with you. Turn it. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I sound like a broken record sometimes when I when I go on uh, and do some solo videos, when I talk about, you know, grab, grab your phone, turn the video on, get your pen out, start typing. I mean, the more, the more that we put out from the, yeah. you know, from our heart, even if it's a little shadowed, if it's if it's our truth in that moment, especially if it's something that's coming in from here, you know, um, it's it's like you talked about earlier. It's got that quantum quotient, and you know, it's not how many people saw it. It's it's the energetic impact that it had on the grid, and it's it's a part of our life that's coming into the fold more and more every day. Now, one of the things that that I think uh, creates a challenge in terms of disclosure because because one thing uh, we've all learned from waking up is all the things that we thought were that weren't <laughs> and then there's more stuff behind it uh but particularly in regard to et and star family uh and particularly in regard to who are they channeling who's giving them that download you know and ultimately we all have to discern for ourselves. uh one of the things that's been happening to me and my wife over the last two or three or four months, maybe even longer, but uh, is energies presenting themselves to merge. Energies presenting themselves, and I guess the dialogue is like this, and I'll just use myself as an example. Uh, you are everything, Todd, and here's a, a big, weird looking blob from off planet. And uh, are you going to be scared of it? No. And I find these, these mergings occurring. Uh, and I guess what I'm saying is on a collective level, regardless of what it looks like out there, part of this collective uh, expansion of awareness 
is including the acceptance of more and more aspects of the spectrum, dark and light. And I think people get a little bit scared. Some people get a little bit scared when it comes to uh, ET and star family, because there, I guess there's a lot of misunderstanding. What's your take on that? Uh, people talk about that there was a, uh, a quarantine and that the reptilians were shipped out and the arconic uh, uh, energies of the fourth dimension have been cleared out and this and that. Uh, it does seem like things are clearer and crisper now. What's your take on, on this? Well, it's no doubt really confusing because as you open up, what am I connecting to? Is it coming from a high spiritual source or is it coming in just to manipulate me because I mm. hear that there are those intelligences out there that are manipulating the planet and whatever. We live in a duality. We've, as a soul, come in to deal with all frequencies. That's part of the human experience and to learn to resonate to what fits for us and our frequency. What I usually say to people, it, I keep, you know, I keep everything really simple, Todd, because I'm, I, you know, I call a spade a spade. The bottom line is that there are entities or frequencies that work with fear. Okay, mm -hmm. you can, you, they can have form. You can call them reptilians. You can call them jinn. You can call them what you like. They work with fear, and we live on a planet full of fear. So it's a really good way to get energy. These these parasites will work with that energy. So the whole process of waking up is transcending our human fears like the shaman mm -hmm. shaman to go multi-dimensionally has to transcend his human fears so he can work multi-dimensionally so we've got to work with our human fears and transcend them as you transcend them you change your frequency that um if you like parasitic consciousness can't get you anymore but it will work then yeah. with ego so okay mm -hmm. so if you start to get caught up in ego that's still a lower frequency so if you mm -hmm. start to believe your own spin and think you're the best thing since sliced bread and no one's quite as good as you, then they've got <laughs> you again. So they've got you again because it's about raising consciousness beyond fear, yeah. beyond ego. Yeah. Once you get They're beyond actually, that, yeah. you know, once you got beyond that, what can they can't plug in. They can't yeah. plug in because the frequency is too high. So you've reached a point where you are then putting out a frequency that is pulling in the same frequencies yeah. as that higher yeah. frequency. So it really is just helping us grow up. That's what I was going to say. I, I was going to say they're part of the they're part of the team too. Yes, of uh, course. You know, when you think about it, and and uh, and I and that's where I was going to go with it because I was going to say to you, it seems like, and again, I'm pulling from my experience and and what I observe with others over the years that I've been involved. Uh, and that is that, yes, the, 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 the higher you go, so to speak, the less that even comes around. I can't even think of the last time that I had, uh, and it had to be three, four years ago that I had a, a an energy present itself. And I was like, Whoa, you know, uh, -uh. but it, it, you know, and I guess like your explanation was perfect. Uh, the more you transcend, uh, you're pulling in different frequencies at that point. And that's what I got out of these. And, and this goes back three or four years. I used to walk in a cemetery every night when I first started this. And that's what I was doing. I was about, I was balancing the darkness and, and, and the light. And I was running into wild animals and entities and all different things. And I just started uh, accepting them and, and well, not being in fear of them or however you want to put it, integrating them. And, uh, and I think that's, that's a really big wild card as to what's happening you know, people talk about, well, they're going to have this tribunal and these people are going to be busted for this and that. And I wonder to myself, you know, not is there going to be justice, but what are people's responses are going to be? You know, are we going to have a higher enough awareness to actually go into a higher level of understanding and not go barbaric? Mm. Oh, it's, it's an it's an issue. Do you think that do you think that we'll see teleporting? Uh, by location, other, uh, you know, by human terms, supernatural skills and ability actually materialize uh, through human beings in the near future? Well, I'll quote a nine-year-old that said to me, Mary, human beings are more amazing 
than they ever know at this moment, but they have to believe it first. Everything yeah. that we hear about, I think we're capable of. And I always head people towards the film Lucy because yes. I don't know if you saw Lucy, but as she got activated, her DNA got activated, look what she was doing. And that's a yeah. perfect example, I think, of what we are capable of, but we've got to believe it first. Yeah. I think another thing I look at too, and I've had a little experience with this in, um, in that shape-shifting um, and watching, you know, and obviously Morgan and I have a very strong connection and actually watching, um, well, uh, you know, watching her turn into a, an Egyptian priestess or, you know, a Indian yeah. goddess or a dragon. <laughs> and, and, and I think this, this is what this child's talking about uh these things are so far out there or they were that really the only thing that lies between the reality or it being welcomed into our reality is our own belief system isn't it it is exactly that um one of the things that i keep everything as i say really simple and what i'm i've experienced it is overshadowing so you know i always call the first level of interactions like the telephone link. You ask the question, you get mm. the answer. You ask yeah. the question, you get, that's the telephone link. The second one is where they, the, um, whether it's a spirit or it's a, an intelligence actually overshadows you and your consciousness is moved sideways. I've experienced that. And the first time it happened, it mm. scared the living daylights out of me because I had, I was finding things were coming out my mouth and I was having no part in that. Um, but at the same okay. time, it was interesting to see how I was shifted to over here. Um, the, this is when the face can change, um, mm -hmm. you know, it can morph or whatever. The mannerisms are different. The language is different. You know it isn't you. Um, and yeah. On some level, obviously, I consented to that as far as I was concerned. But the, the other level is deep trance, like you get with Bashar or whatever. So yeah. to me, it's, you know, it's just a different level of trust in the connection that you're yeah. having with these intelligences out there. So not everyone will feel have the overshadowing experience. To me, I didn't even know what overshadowing was. So the mere fact that it happened to me spontaneously showed me on another level, a catalyst that yeah. in other words, Mary, you didn't even know this was possible and it's happened to you. So therefore it's gotta be real. Cause I didn't even know. Yeah, what right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> skeptical side. That's what I'm you, saying. You know, it's that's really what I'm saying. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I've seen a dragon claw on my chest. So I <laughs> know it's real, <laughs> but no, but let me get this straight. Cause I, I find this really interesting. Uh, so stage one is the Q&A. Yeah. Stage two is what you call this overshadow. And now let me see if I got this right uh, and restate it maybe. Would you say that that's something like, let's say, a higher aspect of you jumping into you and the humans like push to the side and you and, and the, the higher aspect just takes over? It can it be something like that? a higher aspect. It can be another intelligence. For me, the first time it happened was the uh, um, someone who'd passed on was the actual husband mm. of this lady. Mm. And he mm. was talking to her. And I, you know, I didn't even know that she'd lost her husband or whatever. But um, and it happened completely spontaneously. We were, in fact, all having a nice yeah. cup of tea and a chat. And I was doing what was called psychometry, just holding something of hers, her mm -hmm. which held her frequency. And all I was supposed to do was to say what came to me as I was holding it. And what happened yeah. was I'd obviously connected to something really important that was her husband who'd passed on and he came through. Wow. But it could be so, other beings. But what was weird was the sense of being moved sideways. I literally yeah. was here, my body was here, but my consciousness was here going, what the, what's, yeah. what's going on? And this, this, in, this dialogue just went quite spontaneously and I, could remember mm. some of it, but some of it I had no, I had absolutely no control over until I came back in again. But it was a really yeah. profound way of proving that wasn't something I imagined. That was something that yeah. actually happened. And I didn't even know what it was that had occurred. 
no i can i can attest to that too i mean i've seen i've seen it with morgan um since she came over the first time she came over in 2017 it was three or four days into it it happened and uh and it's probably happened to me two or three times with her but uh yeah i i can uh and i remember one time i went to a lady's house <clears throat> whose husband had passed and he was a world traveler and he he'd uh, studied under uh, two or three masters and he had a meditation room and it'd been about a year and she hadn't been in there and i immediately started picking up on him and which was more of like a say a q a thing but when i walked into his meditation room <clears throat> i could see him try to jump into my body and he was telling me i want to come in and i want to lay with my wife and i'm like no 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 this isn't going to happen oh. But the interesting, the and, but we communicated and it was all cool. We I still kind of connect with him sometimes. He pops in, but the but the the amazing thing was is he jumped into their dog, and and uh, yeah, and, and the dog went into a seizure and you know and it and and again you know you see the evidence of it and you start addressing it and, and sure enough that's what happened. So yeah, that's I'm glad you you explained that and you and now you say the third part would be. Or we start to look, or you start to have some physical morphine and different things like that. No, that uh, can you... happen with overshadowing. Overshadowing. Okay, I can. Okay. In my face more, um, and I've okay. seen different movements and whatever. But deep trance, like Bashar, where the literally the consciousness vacates, our consciousness completely mm. vacates and allows total mm. access. Like Bashar is the, the other level. But to give you an example of that being conscious of. An eight-year-old was explaining to me that when he goes on board craft sometimes, he will evaporate into the mantid form. In other words, his essence, his soul, okay. consciousness yeah. would literally go and inhabit a mantid form for a while and then come back into his human container afterwards. Now, he's not the only wow. one that explained it, that to me. One lady told me on board craft, she was in a gray body, um, a gray zeta body mm. as a scientist. So I said to her, so where's your human body? And she sort of pointed to one side saying, it's over there, dormant. And I said, so how do you get from your Zeta body back to your human body? And she described this ball of light, leaving the Zeta container and going back to and reanimating her human body. So we do it, even though we yeah. may be in a human form. So it doesn't seem like it's such a big deal as we, you know, as we begin to understand the properties of the soul and that's yeah. obviously a property we we have we're gonna have to get some uh we're gonna have to go after some eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds and start getting some of this intel out there that's full of code you know just the fact that you know, it, it, especially now too i think the throat chakra is a big deal uh for some reason in this incarnation where we're integrating the physical and the non-physical but there's something about the tonality and the resonance and to be coming from a child like that and hearing something like that, that would, that would have to be, uh, you know, that would have to be activating for, for m many people to hear that because that, that plants the seed of possibility. And yeah. I think that's what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about the possible impossibilities and uh, they become impossible now. And uh, yeah, this is, this is good stuff. Yeah. So now uh, I wanted to ask you, I know you're published and uh, I haven't read a book in a long, 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 long time, uh, you know, like a lot of us. Uh, but I'm interested to know if somebody had uh, the chance to pick up one of your books, which one would you recommend? Well, it depends on whether they're beginning the journey or whether they're in the journey now and just want more validation. Because Awakening was written to help people that were in fear that we're trying to work out what was mm. happening. Is it real? How do I know I'm not crazy? What do I do about the fear? If I start doing strange things, what is clairvoyance? What is clairaudience? How is it experienced? Um, mm. All this, all the questions that I got asked with people that are coming, waking up to their, who they are, Awakening was written as a resource book for that. But the new human is taking it one step further in the senses that ch are your children having experiences as well as your teenagers or yourself? What do the children say about their awareness of past lives, being on board craft, being taken to see various planets? What do they explain about the beings they interact with, the hybrids they connect with? What do teenagers say about their awareness of coming in as, as um, higher versions of homo, um, you know, calling homo noeticus or starseeds or, or whatever name, you know, the new human? 
what are adults saying uh, uh, about these new children coming in that are called ADHD, Asperger's, dyslexia? Why are, are they given dysfunctional labels when in fact they may actually just be wired differently because they're a new type mm. of human? All of that kind of thing is really that it's a more of a, a bigger comprehensive overview of accounts and stories to validate the many ways we're now experiencing reality. Mm. The new human. That sounds that sounds like the one. Um, and and you know, just a couple more. I don't want to keep you all night or all day, but uh, I do appreciate you sp uh, spending time with us today and honoring us with your presence and sharing. Uh, people talk about the event and I've, you know, it's been predicted several times and I'm not really interested to, to know at this point <laughs> if there's going to be an event or a financial reset or any of that, that doesn't appeal to me. But my question is, you know, on one hand, I can see because of the speed and the volume of expansion that's occurring and it is exponential. Uh, the math is changing every day. Uh, I could see there being a blink of an eye, a wink from the universe, and all of a sudden, boom, everybody gets it just because of, of this new math, this quantum. But on the other hand, I could say, okay, you know, it's, it, that's the kind of like the universal carrot on the stick, and it's, it's, it's always in the moment, and it's going to keep pushing us back to the moment, and the moment, and the moment, de-emphasizing anything in terms of like a flash or anything like that. What's your perspective on the event or a uh, a simultaneous collective occurrence well i've certainly had enough information from people all over the globe about a sense of immediacy a sense of um if you like uh this uh, urgency that we've got mm. to get on with things we've got things to do this um and and being told that it's sooner rather than later and that this event will be a complete paradigm shift in terms of the way we understand reality. Um, and almost so overwhelming, it's hard for them to conceptualize what that is. So yeah. I'm as open to anyone, is this going to be some immediacy, immediate shift and everybody, as you say, gets it or not. Um, I really sense that we're heading towards something like that simply because of the shift in in consciousness and awareness um, already going on. So I, I think it's quite a possibility, but I'm not somebody who's hanging around waiting for it to happen, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because I no, no, I get what you're saying. Got lots yeah. to do to get to the point of whatever that hundredth monkey shift is yeah. that we're waiting yeah. for or, or whatever. The, but I, I feel we're here to help with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and that's, yeah, that's where I'll, I'll conclude it with. So one, 2020 seems to be, you know, and again, here we go again, doubting ourselves. I mean, you know, but every, it seems like there's, there is a, like a wave, like a tsunami, like it's just exploding. I don't follow numerology and I don't follow astrology and all that, but in, in eclipses and this, that, but you know what, everything's kind of like, uh, it looks like it's about to boom. Do you think it's 2020? Uh, and, and, uh, you know, do you, do you think that's, that this is, uh, what do you think 2020 is going to be like? Do you think it's going to be beyond our imagination or just, I would, I personally, because I'm Aries, Aries, I want everything yesterday. I want it as soon as possible, you know, get on with it guys. I've come here, you know, to, to get this. I want to be part of whatever it is. So, you know, get it moving. Um, I'm almost looking for all those kinds of. Uh, indicators uh, of what's going yeah. on on the planet right now to see the chaos to see the confusion to see the uncovering the revealing all of that's now going on so as far as i'm concerned certainly the sense is that it's sooner rather than later and i wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it was 2020 yeah but i you know i'm also one of these people that um on the other hand you know it is like it may be but it may not there may be other things yeah. that need to before. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully old enough and wise enough to know <laughs> not to predict anything because, you know, yeah. different timelines, who knows what else needs to come into the equation before mm. that happens. But I certainly believe what the kids are saying 
is that there is yeah. something major ahead of us and it is yeah. a, a, you know a complete shift in awareness and consciousness yeah well yeah if you look at the if you look at the rate of uh change uh just from the first part of this century i mean what it's 19 years i mean I mean, it's crazy. It's just like, it's obviously because of the, the internet's been a huge part of that. There's a school of thought that there is a group of people, of souls that are, you know, people call them star seeds or first waivers or whatever, but that they have gone through all these initiations. They've, you know, embodied and anchored and done grid work and all this stuff in preparation to help the masses when this occurs do you does that resonate with you have you absolutely. heard anything like that absolutely and and i'll quote a 10 year old that explained to me only a few months ago that he'd come in this is his first incarnation he was on a, another planet where he was a blue being and he said he's coming to this planet as his first incarnation as a center seed which means he connects to the center of the planet and as he does so, he is he'll be working with all the pollution to clear the pollution on this planet. That was his understanding of his mission uh, on this planet. So That's already it. they know what they've come here to do. Excellent. Well, I, you already answered my last question. I was going to say, what's your next book going to be? But now I know it's going to be a children's book. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I mean, like children introducing these incredible children. Mary, thank you so much. Uh, it's wonderful talking to you. I'd love to collaborate with you again. I could talk to you for hours and hours. You're a wealth of information and, and really down to earth. And that's nice to see as we all struggle from time to time with the uh, downloads, transmissions and channelings that make us think we're really smart and our ego gets challenged. So it's nice to see. <laughs> it's nice to keep it real. But uh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, in the We'd love to collaborate with you sometime down the road if you're up for that and continue the uh, relationship and yep. continue the work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Todd. It's been an absolute pleasure. You take care. See y'all, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Mary.